Dear friends, here we are again for a new talk on the team Mary Paul and the Ten Commandments. Until now, we have discovered the meaning of five commandments. The first three deal with the love that we should have for God. The fourth speaks us of the filial love we must have for our parents. And the fifth recalls the respect we must have for life. The logical order of the commandments leads us today to the sixth, which has as its object respect for the physical body. This commandment is traditionally associated with the ninth, which goes in the same direction while being the defender of the great values of marriage. Because the two commandments are so closely related in terms of their content, we will treat them together from the angle of the beautiful virtue of purity. It also means that this week you are going to have twice as much work when it comes to learning by heart. Here are the two commandments. Six, you shall not commit adultery. And nine, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. The sixth commandment demands that we respect our body and that of others as sacred realities. First of all, we must respect it in terms of gestures, which also includes what we look at and the bad curiosity that can be behind it. This respect must also manifest in our thoughts and imagination that we must turn away of anything that could be a bad intention. The great and beautiful mystery hidden in the differences which exist between boys and girls has been reserved by God for the sacrament of marriage. In our poor world, the sixth and nine commandments are sadly ridiculed. Many do not observe them and even often encourage others not to observe them either. There are, for example, indecent images that circulate and we must turn our eyes away from them at all costs. Similarly, if it happens that some people make unacceptable remarks, we need to let them know that we don't like what they say and don't participate in such exchanges. While protecting us, it is also a way to bear witness and to give to others an opportunity to get to know or to get to know better the beautiful and great truths of our faith. To help our neighbor, we must also observe the spirit of the sixth and ninth commandments in the way we dress and present ourselves. Thus, Mary Paul said to her dear children who were entering adolescence, do not seek to be an object of desire for others. This maternal advice applies to other areas as well. For example, if we have special talents in this or that field or great skills in a given sport, we must avoid boasting about it or using it to be the center of attention. All these instructions relate to the great virtue of purity. Mary Paul said that purity is the main gateway through which flow all the other graces. Purity is clarity. It is light that maintains in the soul all its beauty, its splendor, and its strength. And elsewhere in Life of Love, Mary Paul says, Purity permits love to dwell in us. It is the only means of remaining in constant communication with God. These statements of our mother say a lot about the importance and the greatness of the virtue of purity. And Mary Paul was not the first to defend, to defend and exalt this virtue. It has been practiced and recommended by all the great saints of the past. Purity is so important that some saints, like Saint Maria Goretti and Saint Philomena, to whom the Holy Curie of Ars had a great devotion, sacrificed their lives in order to preserve it. Like them, Saint Dominic Savio also quickly understood the importance of observing the Ten Commandments and therefore also the Sixth and the Ninth. Wanting to keep his soul pure from all sin, he had adopted the following motto, 
I'd rather die than sin. At the time of his first communion, Dominic had taken the resolution to go to confession often in order to have the necessary strength to fight against sin. As a teenager, he surrendered himself totally to the Immaculate, model of purity par excellence, still today as in the past. And the young saint invited his friends to follow him when he founded the Society of the Immaculate. The purpose of this society was to live with a boundless trust in Mary. It is beautiful, isn't it? The fervor of the saints and their love of purity must serve us as an example and encourage us not to spare any effort to keep our soul pure and beautiful. Following in their footsteps, we must resist every temptation that leads to evil with the help of the Eucharist and regular confession. In these sacraments, Jesus and Mary Paul come to meet us to renew our strength and to keep us on the right path. In conclusion, dear friends, I also invite you to always talk openly with your parents. Their understanding and valuable advice will help you safeguard the virtue of purity, which will allow you to be counted one day among the first saints of the kingdom to come. Next week, we will focus on the seventh and the tenth commandment, which order us to respect the property of others. Thank you for your attention. I give you now my blessing. May all the divinity bless you and all your loved ones, the Father and the Son, the Mother and the Daughter, in the unity of the Spirit. Amen.